Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where we go over terrible advice offered on LinkedIn, Twitter or blogs and we try to turn it into good advice and learn from it. Usually the worst place to get advice about programming is LinkedIn because the algorithm is terrible and it's going to promote absolutely atrocious pieces of advice and today I have one of those. We're going to see a piece of advice that for C Sharp it just doesn't make any sense and the way it's presented in my opinion is very very malicious. Now as always the author of this advice is censored because it is not about the person it's about the advice itself. If you like that content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe for more training check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay so let's take a look at the advice in question. So perform loop unrolling for better performance or the other term for this is loop unwinding. Now I should point out I knew about this practice but I've never ever seen it used in any C sharp code ever, at least idiomatic C sharp code. We're gonna see exactly what it is in a second, but let's just read the text because context matters. Loop unrolling can accelerate your code execution by reducing the overhead of loop control structures, which in general is a very minimal overhead. However, applied cautiously as excessive loop unrolling can negatively affect code readability and maintenance. My argument here is that you shouldn't really have to even think about this in C Sharp at all. So even considering it and putting it in your code and try to convince your manager or your seniors or your lead that it's a good idea because you're saving some. We'll see what we're saving in some scenarios and some very niche cases. Well, in my opinion, it's not worth the damage it can do to your code. And then you have the bad way and the good way. The bad way we're going to see is a traditional loop. The good way is loop unrolling. So in a bad way above, a simple loop iterates through each element of the loop, causing high loop control structure overhead which is dumb it is not high loop control it's very very minimal like don't try to convince people that using loops is bad and then loop unrolling is amazing because it can lead to faster execution of your code reducing the overhead of loop control structures applying cautiously though because excessive loop can have an impact to readability and maintenance in my opinion don't apply it at all. Let's take a look at the example of the code shown here. So this is the code and sorry for it being a bit stretched, that's how it was posted. So the bad way is a traditional loop. You have a for loop, we iterate over the length of the array and then you multiply by two just to have some calculation over here. And at the bottom you have the capturing of the length as an individual variable just to get a bit more of a performance boost on the loop itself. And then you have the operation that is happening within the loop broken down four times and we're offsetting the object within the loop execution by one on each operation. So operate on the current index, operate on the index plus one, then plus two, and then plus three, and use it across the whole loop. And then in the end, don't plus plus the i, don't just increase the index by one, but increase it by four. Basically unrolling or unwinding the operation and doing four times more operations within the same iteration. And then you have the reactions on this post being fantastic, amazing, I'm going to take this to my manager and get a promotion. Like, don't. And as many of you might be able to understand immediately, this only makes sense if the overhead of the loop is more than what is happening within the loop itself. That is the benefit. And traditionally, because this is a very old practice actually, this was used to increase performance in old languages with a trade-off being a bigger binary size on the executable you end up with. So that was a trade-off performance versus size of what you're compiling into. Now let's jump into the code and take a closer look at exactly what's going on and I'm going to go straight into benchmarks and I'm going to explain the concept of the benchmarks because no benchmarks are shown on this post and actually showing some benchmarks would inform the users better about the performance benefit because if you tell me this is better because it's faster, well, show me. And there's a reason why this wasn't really shown. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called Getting Started with Modular Monoliths in .NET and is authored by the legend Steve R. Dallas Smith. I'm sure Steve has taught many of you already with courses on other platforms like Pluralsight, but now he authored his first of many courses on Dome Train and it's all about how to get started with modular monoliths. Not only will he teach you the theory behind the concept and how it compares to microservices or traditional monoliths, but he will also build a whole system in that course, hands-on with code and diagrams and examples and you can follow along. It is an amazing course and it is the best way to get started with modular monoliths hands down in .NET. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount. So either use the link in the description 
or apply code MODULAR at checkout to claim the 20% off. It's a great opportunity to get started with a concept and I can't stress enough how much of an amazing author Steve is. Now back to the video. So what I have here is a benchmark that has an array of 10,000 items and then we have the traditional loop over here where we just add into account the value of the current array element and those values are incremental uh, and then we have the unwound loop or the unrolled loop uh, and we're doing this thing five times so by doing that theoretically we're doing number of iterations divided by five to see what the benefit of this operation is so i'm going to go to the program.cs over here i'm going to say benchmark runner i'm going to go straight into running those benchmarks to see what this amazing feature of unwinding our loop is offering to us. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we get back. Okay, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, yeah, there is a bit of a performance boost, but we're talking 100 nanoseconds for code that if I had an operation that was significantly more complicated, like computationally, well, why would I even bother turn this into a monstrosity that could be high lines of code if it could be five times shorter. Even if you extract that code and you find a way to iteratively call it, like it doesn't really make any sense. But it would be even better to take a look at how this scales with different sizes of operations and collections. So I can say in numbers over here or count and I can say params and give us different sizes of how long this array will be. So let's do it with 100 items. Let's do it with 10,000 items. And let's do it with 100,000 items and see if it scales in a linear expected way. Of course, this means I'm going to have a global setup for my test. So public void setup because I'm going to have to move this array initialization in there. Remove it from here paste it here and then say that this is definitely not null when I'm using it. And once I do that, I can take this, paste it here and run my benchmark. This means I have three times the benchmarks once per count or size of this array. Let's see what we get. So results are back. Let's see what we have here. So as you can see, and now the results are a bit different, but as you can see now, we have 45 nanoseconds and 25 nanoseconds, 4.1 microseconds and 2.5 microseconds with the 10,000 over the 100,000, and then another zero in the end, 41.4 microseconds here and 25.1 microseconds here. So we see linear scaling. It looks like the more zeros you add in the number of numbers you're processing, the more zeros you add in the end of processing. So there is definitely some performance improvement, and we knew that by doing this, but the benefit of getting that performance improvement is quickly outweighed by the amount of damage it does to your code maintainability and readability. Another thing that I didn't mention, but should be very, very obvious, is that if we go back here in this example, you can see that there are no checks about the array size. So in my examples, it happened to be exactly a divisible by five situation where we have 100, 10,000 and 100,000. But if you don't know the length of the array you're iterating over and you do something like this, you can go out of bounds. So you'd have to build special checks that can then slow you down because you're going to have to have a check pair operation over here. So would that still be faster? Well, again, it depends on the type of operation you're doing within that if check. But having five if checks at this point, you might as well go back to the original loop because it will just look really, really ugly. Don't be tricked by the surface level optimization or seemingly optimization of having something like this. There are places in your code to save those nanoseconds and milliseconds way before you get even close to looking at a loop. Because with that argument, don't use for each loops, use for loops. Or don't use link for each loop, use go to's i don't know use while loops please don't do this don't give that advice just because you have to post something on that they give some advice that is actually applicable in some use cases and it does make sense from some standpoint in c sharp if you told me this is c plus plus i'd be like yeah maybe consider it because maybe you really really need that performance but it's c sharp come on but what do you think are those numbers attractive and is it something you would even consider for your own code? What do you think about this advice in general? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.